So the um, water has a very high heat capacity. So when the sun shines down on the Earth, its energy is really absorbed by the ocean. It causes the temperature of the ocean to change, which causes pressure differences, which drive winds, which then drive the ocean circulation. And the whole reason for the ocean circulation and the wind is to distribute energy around the Earth to maintain a balance. And so the most fundamental aspect of climate begins with the ocean circulation. It is really what determines climate. The ocean circulation also determines the height of what we call the thermocline, or where temperature changes rapidly with depth. Along with that rapid change in temperature comes a rapid change in nutrients. So if you look at a picture of color from space, you'll see certain places that are green and certain places that are blue. All the green places are where the ocean circulation allows nutrients to come close enough to the surface so that they are uh, in, in coincident with light. Without that, plants couldn't grow. So it, the ecology of the Earth actually begins with the ocean circulation. This is what unites nutrients with light fueling primary productivity, and after that, all hyotrophic level interactions. When we come down to uh, the more local area where we live here, say on the west coast of Florida, the ocean circulation determines the water properties in which the plants and the animals reside. So uh, if you think about habitat, there are two aspects to it. There's the static part, you know, where the rocks are on the bottom, the reefs, the, the mangroves, and then the dynamic part, the water properties in which the animals and plants reside. Both are equally important. A good analogy is uh, snowbirds coming to Florida. Well, you know, Florida's kind of nice, but it's flat. In that sense, it's a little boring. If the snowbirds really wanted scenery, they'd go to Iceland, they'd go to Hawaii, but they come here. Why? Because it's warm, and it's warm because the winds bring in nice, warm temperatures, which is what the snowbirds like. So habitat has two parts, the, the static part and the dynamic part. And unless we consider both, we really can't understand why species are distributed the way, the way they are. Another really good example for the west coast of Florida is uh, red tide. Why is the region Tampa Bay to Charlotte Harbor the epicenter for red tide? Well, I can tell you right now it has nothing to do with Tampa Bay or Charlotte Harbor. It has everything to do with where materials that originate offshore, where they carry to when they come to the shore. So our red tide actually originates in the middle of the continental shelf, pretty far offshore from where we are right now, but when it gets carried into the shore, the region where it gets carried to is Tampa Bay to Charlotte Harbor primarily. That's also why um, gag grouper tend to, uh, why their juveniles tend to settle uh, in, in that region. So the largest uh, array of juvenile gag grouper, our primary reef fish, uh, the largest array of that is, again, more or less between Tampa Bay and Charlotte Harbor because they spawn offshore, they get carried in by the currents, and this is where they, they end up. So when we think about anything having to do with climate on the Earth, the Earth's ecology, or more locally, where specific species may be located, we have to include the ocean circulation in, in those studies. Without that, we really can't understand the distribution of various phenomena on the surface of the Earth.